Allah 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 Mani Rabbun Illahu Allah 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 Mani Rabbun Illahu Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Wahda Wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da Amma ba'd Fa'a'udh billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Thalika al-kitabu la raib Fihi hudallil muttaqin Sadaqallahu al-aliyyul azim Wa sadaqa rasuluhu al-nabiyyul kareem وقال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وآله وبارك وسلم The greatest source of knowledge that, that can be found in the entire world is from the most knowing, the all-knowing rather. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is Alim. He is the one who knows everything. Anything that we try to hide or even anything that we open to all of the people, no matter what that thing may be, no matter how that information must be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is surely aware of those things. The most knowing, the all-knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed a book to his beloved Rasul, his beloved Nabi, the greatest of all creations, the master of all creations, Sayyiduna Muhammadun al-Mustafa, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. This kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was delivered by the means of the angel Sayyiduna Jibreel Amin alayhi salam. Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam brought it to Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the master of all mankind, and through the blessed, the sanctified lips of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the entire universe was gifted, was gifted this great source of knowledge, this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we call the Quran today. Al-Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti rahimahullahu ta'ala He mentions something very beautifully A few words but he mentions very beautifully and he says La khilafa bayna al-uqala'i anna kitab allahi mu'ajizun He says that there is no dispute There is no discussion, there is no difference of opinion amongst the uqala, amongst the intellectuals that the kitab of Allah, that the book of Allah is a mu'jiza, that the book of Allah is a miracle. Now the thing that we have to think about in this qawl, in this, in this saying of Al-Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti rahimahullah ta'ala is that he, what is he saying exactly? He is not saying that the entire world agrees to this. Because you can see that there are people who do not believe in the Qur'an. There are people who do not believe in the greatness of the Qur'an, in the rank and the virtue of the Qur'an. But what exactly is Al-Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti rahimahullah ta'ala saying? He is saying, لا خلافة بين الأقلاء he is saying there is no difference of opinion amongst the intellectuals. Those people who are sensible, those people who are smart, those people who are intellectuals, they will always agree to this fact 
that the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a miracle. And what else do we understand? We also understand that the person who does not believe that the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a mu'jiza, is a miracle, that person is not such a smart person. That person is not an intellectual. Rather, that person is stupid. This is what Al-Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti rahimahullah ta'ala is saying. That the one who does not agree with this fact, that the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a mu'jiza, is a miracle, then that person, he has no sense. He has no intellect. That person cannot think for himself. If you do not agree with the greatness of the Qur'an, you do not believe in the greatness, the virtue of the Qur'an, then unfortunately, you were not given intellect by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You weren't given enough sense to understand this fact. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ He's saying that that is the exalted book. That is the exalted book in which there is no doubt. There is no doubt in this book. Any other book that comes across us, comes across our eyes, any book that we see written by the worldly people of today, there is always room for doubt. You can always think that maybe this part is not true. Maybe this much is true and this part is false. But regarding the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is saying, that that is the exalted book in which there is room for no doubt at all. This is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To understand the greatness of the Qur'an, how great the Qur'an is, how great is this word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come and take a look into history. Take a look into the time of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. In this time of the Sahaba and the time of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, there was a war that occurred between Persia and Rome. Now one thing that you must understand, one thing that we must keep in mind is that the people of Persia in that time they were mushrikun, they were polytheists. They were accepting many gods to be existent. And the people of Rome on the other hand, those people were monotheists. Yani they were believers in Tawheed, they were Christians. So when Persia and Rome began to go at it, when Persia and Rome began to have a war, the Muslims of Mecca the Muslims of Makkah al-Mukarramah, they were hoping for the victory of the Romans. Why? Because they were from the Ahlul Kitab. They were also believing in Tawheed. And then the Mushrikun of Makkah, the people who were polytheists that were residing in Makkah Mukarramah, they were hoping for the win of the Persians. Why? Because the Persians were also Mushrikun. So when everything played out, the war happened. And what happened was that the Muslims were left disappointed. The Muslim nation was left disappointed. And Rome had been taken over by the Persians. Rome was defeated by the Mushrikun. Rome was defeated by the polytheists of Persia. Now you see, in the city of Makkah Mukarramah, the polytheists, the mushrikun, they begin to rejoice. They are now celebrating that, look, our brothers be your brothers over there. Our brothers, Yani, the mushrikun, the disbelievers, the people who had beliefs against Tawheed, they are over there and they be your brothers. And the Muslims, they become disappointed at this. They are saying that our brothers from the Ahlul Kitab, the Christians over there, they were defeated. They were defeated by people who were not monotheists. They were polytheists. They were believing in more than one God. The, the 
the mushrikun of Makkah, they are rejoicing at this fact. They are celebrating at this fact and they are saying, look, we beat you over there and if there is a war to break out in Makkah Mukarramah, we are to beat you again. Imagine how disappointing hearing this statement would be for the Muslims. Imagine how disappointing this statement was. How much this statement was bringing the people down. The people become disappointed. The Muslims of Makkah, Mukarramah, they become disappointed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He reveals the ayat of Surah tur rum The chapter of Rome. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals these ayat and He tells us, He tells us that Ghulibatir Rome, Rome, Rome has been overtaken, Rome has been defeated. But after their defeat, they are soon to overcome. They are soon to have victory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is announcing this to the entire world before it is happening. That the Romans have lost right now, but they are to win in the future, in the near future, they are to win. In how long? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi bid'i sinin. In a number of years, in a number of years, the Romans are to win and Persia is to be defeated. Now, what does this word bid'i sinin mean? Sinin means years. This word bid'i. It means a number of years, from three to nine. From three to nine. In three to nine years, the Romans, they are to overtake Persia. And they are to defeat the Persians. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is announcing. The Muslims begin to rejoice at this glad tiding. This is good news. That the mushrikun of Makkah Mukarramah, they were just taunting the Muslims. And they were just telling the Muslims, that we have defeated you over there and we will defeat you here again. But now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the Muslim nation a glad sighting. And He is telling the people that Rome is to defeat Persia. In how long? Three to nine years. Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the greatest companion, the greatest companion of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And look at his confidence in the Qur'an. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying something, he is believing. And what does Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu do? He goes to the kuffar, he goes to the mushrikun and he tells them. And he makes a deal with a kafir, with a disbeliever by the name of Ubay bin Khalaf. He makes a deal with Ubay bin Khalaf that if Rome overtakes and defeats Persia in three to nine years, in this three to nine years, if Rome defeats Persia, then you have to give me a hundred camels. And if this does not happen, if Persia is not defeated within these three to nine years, then I will give you a hundred camels. Then, due to the miraculous word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Romans, they actually gained victory over the Persians. The Romans defeated the Persians and Ubay bin Khalaf was forced by the, by the miracle of the Qur'an to give those hundred camels to Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala Look at the greatness of the Qur'an. Sayyiduna Sadr al-Shari'a, Badr al-Tariqa, Al-Allama, Al-Mufti, Amjad Ali, Azmi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He has written a very famous encyclopedia on Hanafi fiqh by the name of Bahar al-Shari'at. We, we know about this book and this book is the encyclopedia of the Hanafi fiqh. Sayyiduna Sadr al-Shari'a Badr al-Tariqa Rahimahullah Ta'ala He mentions in that book a ruling. He mentions a ruling in that book. And he says that if the Qur'an, if the word of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is recited by looking, this will get you more reward than to read it by memory. 
Why is this the case? He says, this is because when you recite the Quran by memory, you are only reciting it with your tongue. And when you are reciting the Quran by looking at it, you are getting the reward for looking at it, you are getting the reward for touching it, and you are getting the reward for reciting it. This is the greatness of the Quran. Bring another book, bring any other book which has the same virtue, which has the same rank, that you are getting reward only for looking at it, only for touching it. You are getting reward for all of these things. It is extracted from the hadith, from the narration of Sayyiduna Abu, Abu Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says in, in his narration, it says, Yaqul al-Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the Rabb, the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, that the one who becomes busy, the one who the Quran makes busy, or my remembrance makes him busy, so much busy, that he does not even have time to ask me for anything. That he does not even have enough time to ask me for anything. This person, if someone is reciting Quran so much, he is involved in the Quran so much, that he doesn't even have time to make dua. That this person does not even have time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I give him more. I give that person more than I give to those who are asking me for things. This is the greatness of the Quran. The virtue of the Quran, the rank of the Quran. And we find people today, and not only today, if you look all the way back to the time of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, the blessed era of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, even then people challenged the rank and the greatness of the Quran. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them a challenge back. He says, In kuntum fi raybim mimma nazzalna ala abdina. If you are in any doubt, any kind of doubt, any little doubt regarding what we reveal, regarding what we send down unto our special, our special servants, fa'tu bi suratim min mithli. Then bring a surah like it. Bring a surah like it. If you are thinking that this word is not the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are thinking that this word is, the, is, is man-made, if you are thinking that this book is from any human, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging the kuffar. He is challenging the disbelievers. Fa'tu bi suratim min mithli. Then bring a surah like it. Not an entire book like it. Not an entire chapter. Rather, if you look, Al-Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi rahimahullahu ta'ala, he mentions in his tafsir that what does this mean? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to bring a surah like it, what does a surah mean? Define surah. And Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi rahimahullahu ta'ala, he brings our attention towards the fact that the shortest surah in the Quran consists of three ayat. Only three verses. So it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking, in comparison of the Quran, only three verses. Only three verses. And what do we find today? That it has been over 1400 years since the revelation of the Quran. Over 1400 years since the revelation of the Quran and no one has been able to compete with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one has been able to bring a, even a surah like the surahs from the Quran. The historians of the disbelievers, they can have the chance to say that, oh no, somebody in these 1400 years, maybe they did bring a surah like it, but you guys hid it away. They can say this. But our response to this is that if you say that one of your people did in fact bring a surah like the surahs from the Quran, then why didn't you save it? Why didn't you keep it safe so that we can see it today? If you haven't kept it safe and we don't have anything like that, we've never heard of anything like this, then how can you prove that anybody has ever brought anything which can be compared to the Quran, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They have failed. 
the people have failed over and over again to match the beauty of the Quran, to match the miraculousness of the Quran. The challenge is still open today. They are rappers today, Ma'azallah. Those people, they make music. Namely, there is a rapper by the name of Sai Hai the Prince. He claims that his verses should have been included in the Quran, Ma'adullah. Now these people, they need to think. The challenge is to him as well. The challenge is to him as well. Match the beauty of the Quran before you make a claim like this. How can you say something like this? People say things and they don't know how much it hurts the Muslim nation. How much it hurts, for us, how much it hurts us for you to say things like this and make, claim, make claims like this. Now, over 1400 years and people have failed over and over again to match the beauty of the Qur'an, to match the surahs of the Qur'an. So what do these failures do? After failing over and over again, after losing a challenge over and over again, what happens to people? They become sore losers. There are certain people who when they lose, they say, okay, nice. It's okay, you won. But then there are sore losers. After losing the challenge, they begin breaking things. They begin burning things. They cause, they cause a ruckus. They cause ruckus after losing. And look at what is happening today. People are burning the Quran in Norway. We have all seen those people who were burning the Quran in Norway, why did they burn it? Why? Because they could not challenge and they could not bring anything in challenge with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They could not bring anything in comparison with the beautiful word, the magnificent word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, because they lost so badly, they are announcing this, they're lost this way. The only thing that they think they can do now is to burn the Quran, ma'azallah. There is a person who was in Florida about a few years ago, maybe about nine years ago in 2010. A pastor by the name of Terry Jones. He also had a program to burn the, this Quran, to burn the Mus'haf Sharif. But why, why did these people think that that was their final resort? They thought this because they have failed to bring in comparison any word like the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because they cannot accept the truth, because they cannot see the truth, these people, they take the easy way out and they become sore losers. This is their loss that they feel like they need to burn the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have revealed this remembrance, this, this Quran, we have revealed it and we are going to protect it. No matter how much you think that you are going to burn copies of the Quran, you can never burn that copy of the Quran which is stored in our hearts. You can never challenge the Muslim nation and the Muslim nation needs to stand up today and realize their responsibilities in loving the Qur'an. We have to connect ourselves with the Qur'an in such a way that no one dares to commit an act so horrendous as the acts which are going on in the world today. They should not feel so brave enough to burn copies of the Qur'an and the Muslim Ummah, we become cowards and we say, oh no, Islam is about peace. Islam is about peace. We're going to let these people burn our, our holy book. And we cower down those people who claim to be followers of the Lion of Allah, Sayyiduna Ali Al-Murtada radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Those people are, become, are going to become cowards now. Be brave and protect your religion. Protect your faith. Protect your holy book and protect the honor of Sayyiduna Rasulullah This is the reason we are in this world today.
to protect the honor of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. People talk about coexistence today. People talk about coexisting today. Then let anybody believe what they want to believe. And you should be able to live your life without saying anything to them. You should be able to live your life without blaming anyone, without putting any, uh, without any violence against any religious group. You are the ones making this claim that coexistence is important. And then after you make these claims of coexistence, you see what is happening to the Muslim nation today. We have become victims of bullying all around the world. All around the entire world, whether you see Syria, whether you see Kashmir, whether you see any part of the world, Norway, whether you see any part of the world, the Muslims have become victims of this bullying. And then you talk about coexistence. The most cooperative in this ideology of coexistence is the Muslim nation. We are the ones who say, you say you believe in Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, you say you believe in who you call Jesus, you say you are his followers, okay, we make the announcement that if you even disrespect, if anybody who calls themselves Muslim disrespect even the blessed toenail of Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam, he has left the boundaries of Islam, he is no longer a Muslim. We are saying this regarding the messenger you claim to follow. What are you doing for us? You allow cartoons to be made of our messenger Ma'adullah. You allow the Quran to be burned and you say this is freedom of speech? This is not freedom of speech. This is abuse of the right of freedom of speech. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to protect our faith, our religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our eyes to the realities of this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the Muslim nation the bravery again to fight for their rights as every other community fights for their own rights.